asked me about the air suspension, how I did it, what shocks did I use, how I did that, if I can install it for somebody else. Yes, I can install it for somebody else. But I want to show you what are the elements or the parts that are involved in order to have air suspension on the Riker. And I believe this is the only one ever. There's no other Riker with front air suspension. One thing is because it's hard to do it because uh, you had to take a lot of percussion, you had to, um, I engineer in this a lot. If something goes wrong with the, with the air system, some, I don't know, riding, I catch a stone or I catch a, a bear, a rabbit or something and break my hose, even if the Riker lose all the air, it will not go down to the ground. So that is a mechanical, precaution uh, or safety feature that I built on the shocks itself. Then there's another safety feature that the Riker would not go down even if I purposely wanted to go down to the ground it would not go there. The air compressor will fight back to maintain the pressure. But I want to show you these shocks. They are uh, basically a Harley Davidson shocks. They are all covered uh, and I modify these shocks because the eye doesn't work. The Harley Davidson use 20 to 12 millimeter, I believe, or 13 millimeter, I don't remember now. The eye on the top didn't work either. The length didn't work. Um, this is the air supply of the shock. So that's one thing. Um, of course, on the other side, not much to see is the other shock. So this was the first, the first uh, thing that I make it work to, to have an air suspension on the front. Um, I post a video on it, and making some sh uh, jokes uh, of the air suspension and, and, the, and the Riker uh, doing push-ups. Or somebody may say, oh, your Riker is doing push-ups, <laughs> like the owner. But yeah, that was the first thing, that was the first thing that I accomplished, was the shocks. And then I have the trouble of what air compressor I'm going to use, because the air compressor, the original air compressor was this one. This little baby, it takes like, I don't know, five minutes to fill up the shocks. And, and this is, this is instantaneous. So with that being said, I installed an air compressor right here. Now it's, it's covered. Uh, I don't know if you can do a, a top shot. Top shot. Mm. Uh, probably you can see there. There is the air compressor. Uh, is quite large. It's a it's a 480 cc compressor. It's big. It pump 200 psi to the tank uh, in a matter of 20 seconds. So we ha I have shocks. I have air supply, and here I have the air storage in order for the Riker to go up and down uh, fast you need an air deposit if not it, won't, it would take forever to have uh, fast reactions I don't know you're riding on the road you see a 2x4 or something that it's uh, imminent that you're gonna hit it or slam on the brake or so the car behind you gonna run over you or you cannot cut lines whatever uh, you just uh, raise it up and you go over the obstacle and then you just pull it back. So I have shocks, air compressor, air supply, and on the other side is the brake. All my controllers are here on this bag. Um, 
I chose to put it there because when I have everything closed, you cannot even tell that a Riker has air suspension. This stock, stock, and it doesn't have even even any wrap on it. This basically is a stock Riker. And the thing that I might put here is uh, on this storage. Um, it's a coat or, or something. I have more storage on the other side, but let's be honest, you don't use these Rikers to to go for long distances. You just put a coat there and, and you're good to go. It's not a it's not a spider where you can put all the luggage and travel far. Um, but I love doing camping too. But for camping, I just put a some bags and I load the hell out of it in a different way. No, I don't use the, the saddlebags to too much. Um, so, go back. I have the shocks, I got the air compressor, the air tank, the controller, where are all, all the solenoids and all the Bluetooth settings. And to control the Riker, you don't have to, you don't have to think in anything of how the Riker works. You don't need to be an engineering, nothing. The only thing you have to focus are these two switches. This is switch one, up, down, and the other on the left, up, and up. Also, as you might see on one of my videos, I can put the Riker up by remote control. And of course, then, of course I have this to maintain the battery. That being said, when I when I put the bike down, when I put the bike down, the bike is designed. I set it up with my weight, so when I go down, it will be at the right elevation on, on the nose. Now I'm gonna try to to push it all the way down, and you will see that the bike. We don't go down. You see, I'll go up, go up, and then I'm gonna start going down, 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 and that's the lowest. Even if I force it, even if I force it, you can hear the air releasing, but it will not go down. So that's one of the pre adjustments I, I, I have. Make it simple. Um, not having uh, some sort of gauges or, or reading the pressure and things like that, which I can't read it anyway on my phone. But I, I never uh, really use it because I rather set it manually. So that's uh, how it works. Uh, many reasons I did it. Safety, because uh, you can go any obstacle, you can go over a curve. Um, I mean, once you have it, is uh, is there's a lot of uh, things you can do out of it. Basically, like an ATV. Um, people ask me, well, your caster, your tow. Suspension component changes. Uh, no, it doesn't change to in a range because in a rally or in an ace, this is a regular ace Riker. Um, you have the rally is a little higher, but you have the same specs on alignment uh, on the Riker. That said, I would never go on the road 
I would never go on the road uh, having the nose like nine inches high on the front. It's uh, ridiculous. I use it only to go over a certain obstacle. I don't use it, maybe I use it like two times. And I use it one time to demonstrate how we act off-road. Off-road, you can put it a little higher and it's no asphalt, so the front tire will not have that great of a grip on it to damage uh, something or some uh, components, some bushing or some uh, rods or ends or something, uh, because it's basically dirt and it doesn't have any uh, aggressive traction to it. And you, you don't use it all the time unless you go into, I don't know, some remote places that you do hundreds of miles uh, on a road. On snow, I don't know how it's going to behave in the snow. It would be good to have the nose off the snow so the radiator doesn't collect uh, snow on the front. But I'm, I'm not familiar with air suspension and cold weather and water condensation in the tank or freezing hoses. Uh, I don't know. I live at Florida, and this is a nice weather. So, uh, that's how it, uh, you get it. That's how it works, and everything has. Oh, I forgot about the power supply. The reason that is charging there is just to to maintain. Uh, because I was planning on using a lot, but the system is fed from a second battery. It has a second battery in this compartment. This is a second battery with a battery isolator. This battery isolator, as you can see there, it's in a, a blue light. That blue light is telling me that, this, that the original battery from factory is full charge. When this is full charge, then it start charging the second battery with that being said every time the air compressor fires up it uses this battery it doesn't draw power from the stock battery ever unless it's above um, i believe it's 12.5 volts or something like that once the, com because the computer and the isolator reads that it's fully charged you're gonna start charging the second one or the feeding while the, feed, uh, while the battery is uh, holding the air compressor on. And that's how it is.